But my name is Karan. I work for the um, same team as Pradeep. Um, I mostly focus on high performance computing um, and I also work on hardware. So some of the instance offerings that you guys saw. Um, so that's, that's some of the stuff that I work on. Uh, previous to this, I was at Azure um, running some of the accelerated stuff, um, GPUs, FPGAs, that kind of thing. Um, so I think this is part of the chart that I think somebody asked for um, was this chart. Um, this is obviously a very small sliver of what we have because it's very you know, heavily focused on HPC or high performance computing. So essentially what we have is a bare, you know, bare set of a bunch of servers that we put in a rack. Um, you know, we call them X7, you can look them up. That's how we sort of talk about it. Um, one of the great things about working at Oracle is that we have one of the best hardware engineering teams um, as part of Oracle, the Sun guys. And so we work with them in collaboration. Uh, we have obviously, as we mentioned, you know, standard, dense IO. The difference there is that NVMe SSD drives um, on, on board. Uh, for high I/O, so you know, big data workloads, for example, really good for that. Um, and then we have GPU instances uh, that we announced uh, just last week uh, in the Bay Area at the GTC conference at NVIDIA. So we have a really close relationship with Intel. We have a really close relationship with um, NVIDIA. These are all Skylake cores. Uh, they're also non-hyperthreaded, um, so you can turn on and off hyperthreaded um, or non-hyperthreaded based on based on what you need. Um, Every single server, obviously, two 25 gig network interfaces. The cool thing about that, from a high performance computing point of view, is if you're running a workload, you can have you know one going out to another server for some you know uh, multi-distributed workload, and then you can have the second going out to like a storage cluster. So a lot of HPC customers that we work with are running things like Gluster or Luster type file storage systems because that's what they use to on-prem. Um, and in this space, we're generally competing with, you know, sort of the Dells and HPs of the world. We're not really competing with the, with the other cloud providers because these are all applications that have been built, you know, 20 years. Uh, and, you know, a big automotive customers are building cars for, you know, crash analysis or simulation or fluid dynamics, things like that. Um, what we just recently announced is uh, Volta GPUs. Uh, so these, this is essentially using... Uh, OCP design, uh, this is uh, open compute platform design um, uh, in collaboration with, with, our, with our hardware. And essentially it's eight GPUs in a node. So we have two GPUs and then we have eight GPUs. Um, the cool thing is that all of the stuff that Pradeep and Lee and you know, everybody else talked about, these workloads really benefit from that. The bare metal stuff, the networking. Um, <laughs> It all is really, really benefited because if someone's paying, you know, three bucks a pop an hour for a GPU, uh, you really want to squeeze out every ounce of performance. So uh, it really does matter. Um, and the reason I say that is because we've done testing. Um, um, so these are some of the apps that some of the HPC workloads use. So, for example, um, LS Dyna, Fluent, these are pretty major um, uh pretty major CFD apps that some of the big automotive guys use, for example, to do crash testing or fluid dynamics, or, you know, if you crash a car into a wall, then how does a the plastic, you know, react to that wall, things like that. Um, they used to do this stuff on-prem and they're very much limited by the scale. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're not highly utilized machines. So this is sort of the traditional CapEx, this is OpEx, you know, argument, but these apps can really benefit from lots and lots of cores and very high parallelism. So um, even though the little little bit at the top, you can see that it's you know only you know five to ten percent. That five to ten percent, for example, uh, equates to like hours and days uh, for 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 a customer. So you know if you think about, for example, image recognition or some of the new cool workloads that people talk about AI deep learning, that five percent can mean weeks. Because uh, if you're training millions of hours of content to do a you know speech recognition, then uh, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, this is just digging a little bit more uh, into detail. Uh, you know, bare metals versus virtual machines and how it scales up. Uh, some of the flat networking and um, you know um, uh, the high bandwidth stuff that that uh, Pradeep talked about results in uh, really good performance for some of these apps. Um, you need sort of like in the tens of microsecond latency between a node to a node and a single data center to really get scale. Um, otherwise, the app just falls over. It doesn't work. Um, so lots of people, like in other cloud providers, will run single node 
um, jobs. And then they'll run lots of jobs. Whereas what we're saying is, come to our cloud, you can scale up for a single job across multiple nodes uh, because of the latencies. Um, one customer that I wanted to talk about was Xenotech. Uh, so they're a CFD firm based in the UK. Um, last year at Open World, we talked about this project. It's called the Bloodhound Project. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do with all of the stuff that we're doing here, um, you know, built on top of our infrastructure, is uh, enabling true HPC in the cloud. What I mean by that is somebody's going to be able to create an asset, like a 3D model, in our cloud using something like VDI or Workstation, like a high-end workstation, rather than buying a $15,000 GPU workstation. They're going to be able to spin it up, use Citrix or Teradici or something else, um, create that model, do the simulation, the data stays in the cloud, it's low latency, high bandwidth, so there's, it, it basically you have a workspace completely in the cloud. Um, that's what these guys do. Um, they work with NASA, they work with a bunch of other customers. Uh, and so this is a project that they did, um, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. And then if I have a quick chance, I can show you that model uh, running live, in fact. So that's a CFD model. Um, it up Already being used. <laughs> <laughs> For the purposes of the demo, and then obviously, you know, get in touch with me separately as well if you want to get access to sort of like a demo link to play around with this. The point of showing this is the latency. Um, so this machine is sitting in like um, Ashburn, uh, it's a GPU, GPU machine. And essentially, what I wanted to show was the latency. So this is, this is at about 50 frames a second. Um, for this to be viable for an engineer to sit, like, say, in Europe or somewhere in the Middle East or whatever, this has to be at about 20 to 30, mic uh, 30, 20 to 30 frames per second. Um, this is usable. So this means that teams can collaborate. Um, what this is also running under the covers is a technology called NVIDIA Grid. What it allows for is larger frame buffers. It allows for things like multi-monitor. So you could be sitting here on your iPad having a complete access to a desktop workstation in the cloud. You could be running that simulation. And then you could also be doing you know, other stuff that's connected to it. So uh, you, know, you, could do, uh, you could do 3D modeling. You could do uh, printing and all those other things. We manage the licensing under the covers. And it's all, comp uh, it's all part of the, the per hour per uh, uh, cost for the GPU. You can run on bare metal, you can run on virtual machines as well. So you can do your dev, dev test workloads on VMs, and you can do your, your uh, bare metal in, um, in uh, obviously, uh, production workloads. So this is the model that I was talking about, about before. So if you see how that's kind of you know, not jittery at all, again, this is sitting on the other side you know, of the country. Um, we have customers doing this kind of work um, in production today. Um, it's mission critical, which is which is pretty cool. Um, and then they obviously did the simulation in here as well. 